computer animation tutorial, actually a slightly updated version of an older tutorial that I had done previously of a stick figure running off and jumping over a cliff and landing on the other side. And in between this pit is a bunch of flames that we have done in a previous and uh, different um, animation tutorial as well. So the flames is in a, another piece, but we're going to go over mainly the stick figure animation, animating them frame by frame. So as you can see, as I scroll through frames here, you have them run and step and jump over the gap here. So let's go ahead and start another a new project here, choosing action script three and our default size to start with. I believe actually we went with about 12 frames per second in this uh, animation. So we'll go with 12 frames per second. And we want to start by using our pencil tool to draw the cliffs. So we set our pencil color for black, change your stroke weight to three or four. We're going to click and drag to make a cliff that kind of goes off the side of our stage here. If your lines come out very straight, you might have your pencil on straighten mode. So we want to straight, just change it to smooth mode in order to get a little bit more uh, kind of organic type lines. And then here we go with another shape over here for my two cliffs. So now, in order to fill the cliffs, we need to choose the paint bucket tool, change our color to something else to fill it with. And now, as you can see, I'm clicking on to fill these shapes, but they aren't filling. It's because there's little gaps in the lines sometimes that uh, aren't being recognized. So I'm going to choose my close large gaps option here. When I have my paint bucket filled, it'll be right in this corner. When I click now, you can see that those uh, gaps will fill. So we want to lay, name this layer one by double clicking on it and call it cliff. And then going to add in a new layer. And this layer two, I'm going to call stick figure. And what I'm going to do at the beginning here is going to go ahead and open up about 40 frames of animation. So I'm going to hit F5 on my keyboard to open up blank frames and do that as well on the cliff layer. So now you can see I can scrub back and forth one through 40 frames um, of my animation here in order to... Uh, have some space to work with. So we can draw our stick figure a couple different ways. Probably want to start by making a circle with the oval tool. Maybe I will fill it with like a dark gray color, have a black as an outline. And if I click and drag and hold shift with my mouse, I will get a good circle, a nice proportional circle. And then, like I said, we can use either the pen tool or the pencil tool as kind of your main uh, drawing tools. Um, I kind of like the pencil or the pen the pencil actually I like better drawing wise, but the pen um, I like better because it will use only the anchor points that I click down. So each time I click, it's putting down a new anchor point where the pencil tool may end up with actually more um, anchor points than just these main ones that I'm putting in, which makes it a little trickier to manipulate your stick figure if you want to like click and drag to move around certain parts. So first, the first pose that I'm doing for my stick figure is, um, oops, and every once in a while you notice you kind of have to like click on the selection arrow and then go back to your pen tool and then click and to extend that line there. And then to make the other arm, I have to go back to my selection tool and back to my pen to then um, attach this part here. So I want more of an open pose for this first stick figure pose. Um, and again, we can, nice thing about the pen tool is I can click and drag these points pretty much to um, get them to be where I would want them to be. Um, just right from these corners. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, but yeah, I want more of an open pose here for his first pose. And then the second one I'm going to do is going to be more of a closed pose. And it's just gonna kind of alternate back and forth. Um, I'm gonna click on this frame to select my entire stick figure. I'm gonna lower him down a little bit. I want that leg to kind of cross over the, uh, the line there at the edge of the cliff. Just kind of adds a little bit more uh, perspective to it a little bit. 
I want to go to the second frame. I'm going to hit F6 to create a new keyframe there. Um, and I'm actually going to... Um, I'm going to actually, I can use this stick figure again. Let's try and use him first. So I'm going to move him over just a little bit. So the head is maybe just a little bit over from where the other one is. And like I said, we wanted this to be more of a closed pose. What you're going to notice though, is if I drag this line over another line, they're going to join into one. So if I click and drag that now, all of a sudden these are moving together, which can be kind of a pain. But as long as that's the spot where I wanted that arm to be, which it is, um, it's not really a big deal. And then I'm going to bring this arm in as well. Like I said, a little more of like a closed pose for this um, second pose that I'm having my figure in here. Oh, so you can see as I straightened out that leg, it like turned into one uh, piece there. So that was a little weird, but um, yeah, I'm getting this into place here. Again, a little more of like a closed sort of pose. And basically if he alternates between these two poses, it's gonna create illusion enough uh, that you have kind of a running stick figure going on here. Again, if I wanted to move this, it was going to, uh, I'm just going to make this elbow, I think, go out a little bit more. So his arm's kind of a little more like a pumping position, you know, so. Yeah, he's just going to alternate between those two poses. So basically, now I can take this first frame. I'm going to hit Command-C to copy this stick figure. Go to my third frame here. Hit F6. Um, and then uh, I'm going to delete this stick figure and Command-V paste in a new stick figure here um, and then what I can use is a tool called the onion skin tool which is these two little squares that are kind of overlapping here um, in your timeline if you could just leave your mouse over some of these features they will let you know what they are we want the onion skin outlines and you can see you have can adjust this like green dot and this blue dot so you can see a certain window of frames in your animation all at once. So your current frame that you're on is going to be black, like a regular black outline stick figure. And then the other ones will be green if they're ahead or um, blue if they're behind it. So next thing we want to do is we're just going to take the second stick figure, copy him, uh, go to our fourth frame, and we could actually hit F7. We'll in, uh, insert a blank keyframe, and then I could just hit Command V again. Um, so F7 actually is probably the better key to hit when we're copying these. So again, I'm going to copy this stick figure. Um, go here, hit F7 because that's going to put in a blank keyframe, and then hit Command V. And so now we're kind of moving along here where my stick figure has reached the cliff. So he's going closed open, closed open. Um, you know, and these I can maybe adjust just like a little bit. You know, you want the heads to be about like touching each other is the rule that I kind of use for the most part um, in order to get like good smooth animation out of it. And so let's see, now we're actually at a point where we're gonna need to draw a new stick figure. Um, we could try and manipulate this one and crunch him into the position. But I think again, I'm gonna hit F7 and I'm gonna draw a new stick figure. Um, I may copy this one's head. If I hold shift and click on the outline in the circle, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy his head just so that the head is the same size and then hit Command V on this frame here. And now he's gonna be in kind of like a crouched position ready to jump. So now I'm gonna go ahead, take my pen tool, click here to start the body. He's gonna, his back's gonna be kind of bent here. His legs will go out front. And then I'm going to maybe stretch this part out a little bit. And I can go back to the pen tool and uh, maybe I'll have one arm kind of like going back and one arm Kind of going frontwards. Maybe I'll just add this lower part of the arm there. 
So I just kind of did one leg as if almost like they, the legs are joined together and he's about to bounce off of both legs going up. Um, you know, I could, let's see, make like his leg extend out straight as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think I liked it better just as this way. He's about to uh, launch himself over this gap here. Um, again, I'm going to hit F. It's actually, maybe in this instance, we might want to go with, no, we'll go with F7 again to have a new clear keyframe. Um, we'll take this stick figure, though, copy it, and paste it again. And now he's going to be airborne. Um, actually, you know what? I wanted to make him have one more crouching pose before I continued. So I'm going to go here and maybe just bring his body down a little bit more. Holding shift, I can get both the outline and the shape. I'm just going to bring his head down a little bit more. Maybe bring the arms like in. Just a tad. So, just making a little more, one more frame there where he's really getting low and then going to extend into his jump. So, again, I'm going to hit F7 this time. So, I'm going to draw a new stick figure. I'm going to hit Command, or I'm going to go back and copy his head again. So, selecting both and then Command C. Going to my new blank frame and hitting Command V, and then I'm going to draw him one more time here. This may be one of the last times here, and this time kind of have him his body going off. He's going to have one leg kind of like lunging here. I'm going to turn this toe up a little bit, and then his back leg is going to go straight, really pretty straight down and maybe like his toe is on the ground kind of here. And then uh, again, the arms um, are probably gonna both be going out straight here. Um, so I've got to start a new line here. So that is one thing about the pen tool that is kind of like a pain. Like when I clicked that first time, it didn't put down a point, so now I'm connecting it to the body there, but I, I still want to make the arms longer. So now I got to go back and click one more time. So pen tool can be kind of a pain at times. Um, so if you're connecting to endpoints, it seems to work pretty much fine. But sometimes the pencil tool is nice because you don't really have to worry about that. It's just click and dragging. So he is about to take lift off now. I'm going to adjust the point of this toe just a little bit. You know, maybe even bend his leg just a little bit there. So, and he is about to, ready to take off. And if I hit command and return, I can see my animation start to test play and see him kind of strut on out here and get ready to take off. Um, the next piece I'll probably do is going ahead and hitting F6 again. Now if I hit F6, oops, I hit it twice, that will create a new keyframe that has the same thing on it as the previous one. So what I can do with that is just take him and move him a little bit because this guy isn't going to change too much from the previous one. He's really just going to be maybe like his legs are a little straighter. Um, maybe his arms are extended like a little bit more or just in a little bit different way. And then again, he'd hit F6 one more time. And now I'm actually just gonna select this frame, again, move him over a little bit so that his head is still kind of touching. And I'm gonna take my transform tool here and I'm going to rotate him just a little bit. And then, again, I'm going back to hitting F6 because I'm just going to use the same stick figure here. I'm going to slide him over just a little bit. Again, rotate him just a little bit more. And then hit F6 
and slide him over just a little bit more and maybe bend his legs a bit more as he approaches the landing here. And again, just kind of taking these out a little bit. And moving this guy so it looks like he's getting in there to his, about his landing position. We're probably going to end up with, we should end up with about 20 frames of animation here. Um, and then I think what I want to have happen here is I'm going to go F7, uh, blank keyframe. I'm going to go back and take his original crouching pose and I'm going to copy that. So this lower crouching pose, I'm going to go Command C, and then I'm going to go to here to my blank frame and hit Command V and put that in. So we're going to say he has landed. All right. And then I could do another F7 to put in a new blank keyframe here. You can see that little blank dot right there. And I'm going to go back and take this stick figure here and then paste it again on this frame here. So again, just kind of him crouching down even a little bit lower again. Um, I think that was the right one. Yeah, because he was crouching a little bit lower in that one than this one. Although those look kind of like they were the same frame. Oh, right, because I actually wanted him to go up more. So this is the one I want. Sorry, wrong one there. Command V again. So now he's starting to pop up out of his crouch. And then we can go back into just the walking. So again, we're going to take this first frame, copy. Uh, I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to put an F7, a blank keyframe, and hit Command V. And then he's just going to strut his stuff right back off the side of the stage here. So back up to full kind of stance. Go to the second frame, Command C. I'm going to go to the end, put in F7, Command V. Put them right next to heads touching. Uh, I can go right back here and hit Command C, go to the end, F7, Command V. And we are just about across. And then maybe one last frame, so I'll go another F7. I'm going to skip back two frames because I want to alternate these. Oops, I hit Command V instead of command C and copy and then put one more command V in here to paste and then uh, yeah so he's off my stage by that point so almost 20 frames is about what we really want to get to have a good running animation here and command return we'll test play this animation so there we go we got our dude running and jumping over this gap now let's just talk really quickly about how to add in our fire animation that we did in another previous uh, assignment, um, another tutorial on how to animate flames. So we double click on this movie clip that we have. You can see we have our different frames of animation going on in here. Click back to our main scene. Um, if you click on this movie clip, you should see it highlighted around the edges in blue. We just hit Command C. We're going to go back to our stick figure. We need to make a new layer for this to live. We can call it fire and then um, hit Command V to paste it in. I can use my transform tool to kind of squish it or manipulate its size, maybe make it skinnier and shorter. I want it to go off the edge of my stage so that I don't see it. And I also want to move it behind my cliffs so that way it kind of goes behind the edges there. So if I hit Command Return, you can see my kind of little fire movie clip animation playing in there. Um, something else you can do with the fires, you can actually, I'll hit Command C and Command V to paste it in again. Um, and maybe I make it a little bit shorter and um, I could even drag and flip it reversed so that it is um, reversed from the other one and backwards and shorter. So that's a little extra layer into the animation there. So there you have it. Stick figure successfully jumping over a gap in a cliff or fire pit. So I hope you have lots of fun and get creative with creating your own stick figure animations.